From the inner sense of time Comes the ancient poet's rhyme Bringing us the master key To open up the mystery From the depth of time and space We arrive in quiet grace Finding what is meant to be As we explore the mystery Pouring forth from days gone by We can hear the poet's sigh From the depth of ecstasy Moving into mystery Hello and welcome again to Creative Connections. I'm your host, Gary Blanchard, and today I have a returning guest, singer-songwriter Jess Martin. Hi, Gary. Jess, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. It is such a, a pleasure, and I realized that it was a, about a year ago when you were on. It, it seems like it hasn't been that long, <laughs> but uh, when you were here last, you were working on an album. Right, and I brought you a copy. I oh, okay. I should have taken out my props. Um, yeah, I uh, continued to work on that with Jopi Fitzpatrick at Jopi Studios over in Belchertown. Uh, and that was a wonderful process, and we got it mastered in February uh, okay. by Tom Mankin, um, who works with a bunch of folks, including the Green Sisters, who I just saw at Green okay. River Festival. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Tom mastered it, and we decided finally let's send it off so in august august 19th i've booked an hour seven o'clock hour at luthier's co-op in east hampton to do an album release party wonderful uh, but i bought you an advanced copy oh you, <laughs> you know so sometimes this job has its perks <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh you've also been working on a video yeah, um, in my hunt for gigs for this summer season, I saw that uh, some folks at Downtown Sounds were doing a social media push. And I met this young woman, Abby, uh, and, uh, and her housemate, Danny, and pitched to them doing a video of my song, Airheart. They loved the song and um, were totally into it. So we're working collaboratively on making this video, uh, my first narrative music video, uh, dedicated to Amelia Earhart. Well, as it turns out, two fun facts. Amelia Earhart turns 125 this year. Uh, maybe laying aside all those conspiracy theories that she's still out there, but I don't know. <laughs> she could still be. If aliens were involved, any, all bets are off. Uh, and what was the other thing? Oh, I learned that there is a New England Air Museum just down the road in Windsor Locks, uh, Connecticut, and they have the sister plane of the plane that she was flying in when she disappeared, the Lockheed Electra. Just right there, restored, built the same year, same model. It's kind of crazy. They have a whole Amelia Earhart display and then we can just drive <laughs> down there and check it out uh, and see this piece of history uh, that's just in our own neighborhood. So that was kind of cool. Um, in this video process, learning that we have some of these great local resources. Um, so they're uh, wonderful to work with, and yeah, I was starting to put together this video, and we brought a little rough cut of some in uh, production uh, work, and uh, just really excited to release that later this summer. Okay, let's, let's take a quick look at it. Sure. So this is the promo for the video Hair Heart by Jess Martin. <laughs> Search, but you will never. 
So that, that was really great. And I love how you have, how they and you have interspersed photographs mm. of Amelia Earhart and then you performing. Uh, and I imagine that the whole video is going to be really am amazing to, to see. Yeah. What was it about Amelia Earhart that drew you to? I think, you know, she, she was a pioneer. And when I introduce the song, uh, when I play it out at gigs, I'm always wondering, like, do I need, how much setup do I need to do? Like, how much <laughs> history do people have? I mean, it's been a while. Uh, but I've always been inspired, sorry, uh, inspired by her story of the first female pilot to fly solo over the Atlantic. Uh, she did a lot of work for women's rights, seems especially relevant now, um, and that she was just this phenomenal person who became a legend when she vanished. Um, and in fact, when I was doing some research on her uh, on Wikipedia, because most people have a Wikipedia page, uh, it doesn't actually list her as dead, it just says disappeared. Uh, and I found that just even that little uh, Wikipedia note inspiring like the sort yeah. of vanishing yeah you know uh and i think that's one thing that's so fascinating about her story is that the ending is unknown yeah and i think you know for somebody who's turning 125 i think that is part of what keeps her in people's mm. minds and memory which then of course brings all of her accomplishments also right. into our our minds and memories. So that's that's really good. Uh, would would you like to play the, the song for us? Sure, I'll be happy to. So Amelia Earhart was a fan of the color red. She loved red airplanes. She loved yellow airplanes. Uh, the Lockheed Electra that she vanished in was actually red. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, just make sure it stayed in tune. So after some uh, production work, uh, it's kind of nice that I actually had a red guitar. Uh, so this <laughs> is this is Earhart. Gonna follow the stars, taking it true heart. Lockheed Electra made legendary through mystery. You will search, you will search, and you will never find. Climbing trees, cropped hair, leaf fly, touch the air, sweet plain canary, just a girl dressed in brown, call me Lady Lindy now. Summer sky along with you. Lucky Vega 5B. Touchdown, cool more ground. Fresh face of love and sound. Between blue sky, blue sea, Lockheed Electra. How can I find land? Calling out for how land, Lockheed Electra. There are no accidents, only risk and failed attempts. 
Williams. Gonna follow the stars, taking it true heart. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Well, shall yeah. I yeah. rejoin you at the table? Yes. <laughs> so uh, when we first talked. Things were just starting to open up for live performance. Right. So how have you been doing as far as, you know, getting bookings and... Yeah, yeah, and I think it's also been a little a slow start this year, um, but it picked up speed really quickly. I think people started to feel uh, like they could manage this where we're at. Um, so gigs started lining up and I'm um, still uh, playing mostly outdoors and I think a lot of places have actually accommodated for that in this in the past year and a half um, so uh, moving from the parking lot to more dedicated outdoor space so <laughs> uh, which has been really nice I played at New City Brewery in East Hampton a couple of weeks ago and they have a sweet patio set up they've got the tent uh, they've got you sort of cornered in like, with like amplifying walls the sound was beautiful and it was a beautiful day fortunately uh, next well next up I'll be playing at Fort Hill um, on July 14th and then returning to the VU in Turner's Falls at the end of the month playing out in their uh, parking lot um, but it's been a great experience discovering a lot of uh, venues that have sort of adapted and venues that have also just decided to incorporate music into their space um, and I met with this uh, performer uh, independent musician who gave me a lot of great tips on doing more networking and outreach so that's introduced me to a, a lot of new places as well so it's been kind of great to like test some new venues and, and learn how to sort of refine my <coughs> setup yeah you know m mentors uh, are so wonderful to have and there are people who are afraid of sharing information mm -hmm. because they're afraid they're going to lose out. But there are those wonderful people who want others to be able to succeed as well. And when you can find people like that and hook up with them, it really yeah. is a wonderful thing. Yeah. So uh, you uh, are doing a fairly good number of performances right now. Yeah, yeah. Be uh, well. It's, I'm excited to play Luthiers in August, and then uh, Great Awakenings, this brewery down in Westfield. So yeah, and sort of like testing the waters of how far afield do I want to <coughs> play. And um, and now what I'm kind of focusing on is as things are opening back up. My original dream pre-pandemic was to start forming a band. Well, that's starting to sort of feel okay to do again like people are feeling a little more comfortable to be together play together and so I think that sort of organically leads to people being like okay let's let's do this let's make a band yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. so now I'm sort of working with this mentor to sort of like okay let's how do I recruit some musicians how do I find the right sound what do I want to experiment with and the thing I've also learned too is once you put it out in the universe I've got people like, oh, by the way, I'm a bassist. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And they're like, oh, yeah, and this guy plays the drums. And I'm like, hmm, a band seems to be finding me. Um, so, yeah, I'm really being intentional about how do I go about sort of forming that sound and, and who I want to work with. So I'm excited to see. Yeah. You know, it's on. interesting because when you write a song as a solo performer, mm. but you then go into the studio and you add instrumentation to it it sort of takes on another life and you know then sometimes it's like when you go back to solo performer it's like something's missing yeah, yeah. <laughs> I now have like band envy when I go see places uh, and see people play with others on stage and I'm like oh what a comfort that is <laughs> well you know it, and it's not just a comfort mm. but as you know you feed off the energy right. 
of the other musicians. Mm -hmm. And it really, I think, brings your performance to a different level because it's you're feeding on that energy as well as the energy of the audience. Right, but it's right. two different energies. Yeah. Uh, and it's a really a wonderful thing to, to feel. Yeah. So on your album, uh, did you work with other musicians on that? Well, Joby is a drummer and he's, he was doing all the engineering. He did live drum tracks. We did not record at the same time, but part of the work I'm looking at doing on this next uh, EP project is working with this uh, musician who wants to produce me and what she envisions is bringing a band into the studio together, finding the sound as a sort of collaborative effort. So I find that both very scary, but also exciting to think about. Um, but yeah, working with Jopi, he would add these layers of mus uh, instruments. He did the live drum track, he did some uh, keys, he added bass, he added strings, some of those electronically, and some of those through his own playing. And uh, it, was, it was so fascinating to hear that develop, that evolve out of my song, because yeah, as I wrote it, I could hear the guitar, maybe I would hear a little, heartbeat of something else but yeah. I never would have thought of strings necessarily and and what he added I just thought that fits that fits that feels right um, so it is wonderful to sort of like see the potential of like working with folks who bring their talents to the conversation and create that conversation of uh, the song growing yeah there and I can't think of the gentleman's name or the name of his band but there's a, a guy in New York who talks about how songs have lives. Mm. And the first life is when it's written. Then the second life is when it's recorded. And the third when it's performed. Mm. And it may be different in each of those lives, but it's still the same song. Yeah. And, you know, I know for years I didn't want to add anything I couldn't do live. Uh, and I'm so glad I finally got past that. <laughs> So play another song for sure, us. Sure, I'd be happy to. I'll play something off the CD. How okay. Flip this. Is uh, Earhart on this CD? Not on this CD. But, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a fan favorite. Uh, the CD, I kind of the concept was to be all about um, around identity and gender identity, but also sort of gender expression. Uh, so I chose songs along that theme. And uh, this next EP, I'm like really thinking hard about the, the concept around it. And what I proposed to my producer to be was I'm going to pitch a concept to you and record some songs. And you can tell me if I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I can do that. So Paper Doll, um, I will say is my father-in-law's favorite song on the EP. Uh, and it was so sweet, he told me to say that every time I introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I call it my Julie Andrews Decides to Sing Punk uh, song, because um, that's who I feel like I'm channeling. <laughs> um, so here's Paper Doll. She's meeting all expectations, sees no reason to exceed them, follows her mother's recipe, flattens her personality. Her brother's breaking all their hearts, her sister's playing the spoiled part, stuck in the middle of this chain. She chooses to be paper doll plain. She, she turned herself in, turned herself in, into a paper doll. Something, something that don't feel, no, it don't feel nothing at all. And every night the same rich oh, she says stay, oh stay that way, now stay. Stay that way, paper doll. She's made herself a paper life, paper doll house, paper quiet nights, and were it all 
to wash away Wonder who would she feel anything She, she turned herself in Turned herself in into a paper doll Something, something that don't feel no It don't feel nothing at all Pray stay, oh stay that way, now stay, stay that way, paper doll. Early one morning, so they say, another perfect paper doll day. Wide awake she became, 3D, could almost hear her blood pumping. Listen close, you could hear her scream Tired of being part of the scenery I want to feel every goddamn thing She, she turned herself in Turned herself out, out of a paper doll Says, uh, she can feel, yeah, she And every night the same ritual Whoa. She says goodbye, get lost Paper doll Goodbye, get lost Paper doll <laughs> All right. Thank you. While, while, while you're up there, yeah. why don't you do another for us? Oh, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> so this one is kind of, I think of it as my happiest song. Uh, my brother tells me it's my most angsty song. <laughs> and I was like looking up angst afterwards. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. I bet it makes me so happy. Um, I, I love being inspired by history and historical figures. And this is a, kind of like a popular culture-ish uh, historical figure um, for those who might have any 70s references at their disposal. Uh, there was a woman named Daredevil Debbie who was uh, doing stunts in the 70s. She, the thing to do then was to get on a motorcycle and jump over a lot of stuff. Um, and so she went head to head with Evil Knievel. So if you know who Daredevil Debbie is, we definitely know who Evil Knievel is but everybody's got a computer, go look them up. It's kind of fascinating. So she out jumped Evil Knievel and then she retired her motorcycle. And I thought, oh, there's gotta be a song there. <laughs> and I was trying to like, Daredevil Debbie, Daredevil Debbie, and it wasn't coming together. And our neighbors brought their kids over during the shutdown and their little girls were running up and down our driveway, right into traffic. And I thought, oh, these two girls are like a couple daredevils. Maybe the song's about them. I was walking around and I was trying to put it together and and then we had the inauguration and saw the swearing in of the first woman VP and I thought well maybe the song is about her uh, and then it finally finally started to come together so here's uh, Daredevil <laughs> She's got daredevil in her DNA. Good luck keeping that girl in her place. She's brutal, brilliant, filled with righteous self-rage. She's got daredevil in her DNA. She's got daredevil in her DNA. Boys 
should have scared her at the playground. Call her names, push her down. Sticks and stones, the who's flying fist. She rages back, always persists. his head. Daredevil, she's got daredevil in her DNA. Good luck keeping that girl in her place. She's brutal, brilliant, filled with righteous sound rage. She's got daredevil in her DNA. She's got daredevil in her DNA. that White House ready to lead cause her time is now when they ask where her power comes from she doesn't blink says it's in her blood and I'm so glad I never held her back their heads. Daredevil, she's got daredevil in her DNA. Look at that girl, she's found her place. She's brutal, brilliant, filled with righteous sound rage. She's got daredevil in her DNA. She's got daredevil in her DNA. All right. That always makes me... Ooh. <coughs> daredevil. It's an energy pumping song. It is. So. And, and I love how it, it switches so many times in rhythm mm -hmm. and feeling. So if people want to keep track mm. of where you're going to be performing next, how do they follow Jess Martin? Oh, well, I've now created a website, which is Jess Martin dash music.com uh, I'm on Instagram just Martin music so you can at me there and follow uh, I'd be happy to have you and uh, of course Facebook just Martin music so just start looking for me um, and yeah I'm trying to keep in every so so many platforms to keep updated but I do uh, keep them all there present and accounted for and uh, I'm not sure when this will air but July 14th I'll be at um, Fort Hill Brewery uh, it's a Thursday night, and then uh, just keep following me from there. Just don't follow me home, <coughs> but, you know, follow me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There, we we want to watch where people follow you. Yeah. Uh, and the album release? is August 19th at uh, Luthier's Co-op in East Hampton at 7 o'clock, and it'll also be a birthday party uh, for me, uh, so that's relevant. Uh, I'll be turning 50 this year, so it's sort of like a nice combo. And they have a great cafe. I don't have to buy anybody cake. <laughs> you can get it there. Um, well, maybe not cake, but you can get food. Uh, and then they have a lovely setup. And if you haven't been to Luthier's, it's worth the trip. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. Jess, thank you so much thank for coming you. back in. It's always a pleasure to, to sit and talk with you, and especially to hear you. Oh, thank you. And I want to thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time on Creative Connections. goes by so quickly Time just slips away But tomorrow brings brighter days